Welcome back to Software Inc. Today is the day we're finally building a brand new office. I have moved the company. We are no longer in that rented office building with the workshop. That has since all been deleted. It is gone and I am building this new office which is gonna house the company as it is. So this is a huge build and uh, this is definitely, I think the probably, potentially the most ambitious build I have done in Software Inc. thus far, ever before. Because I actually really put in an effort to make every, well, everything about this building unique and even all the offices, I try to make every single office different from the other ones next to it. There's some that are the same, but most of them are quite different. I also wanted the building to be unique. I wanted different wall textures and all that. And uh, if you know anything about Software Inc, every room could only have one wall texture on the inside and the outside. So that means you have to use different rooms to be able to achieve that. I also discovered that I didn't even, I don't know when this was added, but you can turn rooms into like pillars. So you can like sort of make a solid block, which basically allows you to, I guess, create different wall textures in certain areas. Like this bit at the front here, you can see there's no interior to it. That is actually a solid block. I turned it into a pillar, which also allows you to get rid of that annoying like alert symbol of saying there's no access to the room, which is really nice. So, uh, I took a little bit of inspiration from Google on this build. I think I just searched like Silicon Valley offices. Um, and there was this one that had this big uh, sort of, I guess, uh, covered lobby area or like driveway area. It's kind of what this is based on. And then, so basically this is our main entrance, which is a shame because <laughs> everyone in the building comes from the other side because I actually build the multi-story car park and the plot behind. So everyone drives in parks there and doesn't use this nice little entrance I built. So I was actually thinking I might try and rotate the entire building because I think we can do that. I think we can just pick it up and rotate the whole thing. It might be a little risky, but we'll give it a go. So yeah, we have this big, big building uh, and I believe it ends up being like six levels high with obviously room to expand further. And I made sure because this game now has like... My apologies. Uh, I couldn't hear what uh, you uh, said. Uh, yeah, yeah, I wasn't talking to you. Uh, <laughs> because this game now has fire inspectors and obviously your whole building can burst into flames. I made sure to plan in fire escapes and all that kind of stuff. So I actually, yeah, I did actually try to think about this building practically. And also I wanted it to be efficient for people to get around. Like I didn't want to have only one way to get somewhere, but I also didn't want it to be too convoluted and have too much stuff going on. So really I did, uh, and we'll get to more of the layout soon. This is the initial building. Also, this is by no means the entire build. I cut out so much of this, honestly, like legitimately. I spent uh, three days over the weekend just building this, like Friday, Saturday, Sunday, just flat out just building this like for eight hours a day. It took, it took so much time. Um, and if all of it was recorded, well, first of all, it would it'd be so long. Uh, and it'd also get really boring. This is kind of the most interesting part is the actual external look of the building. When you start placing items, that just takes such a long time. So I was trying to, I, I cut most of that out. But yeah, this is what I was talking about. Like I was trying to make this building really interesting, having like di different like columns and pillars and overhangs and cut-ins and trying to make it a little bit more visually interesting to look at than just a regular rectangle or box or or like a circle. I mean, circles are kind of cool, but we've kind of done that before. So I really wanted this one to be different from what we have done before. And that's what I was trying to do. So... Oh, and I actually really like the, the sort of lobby area of this building. Oh, I also planned it in mind of security guards because we didn't really, well, I did hire some security in the last building. I didn't really bother that much. Uh, this one I planned a little bit better for security. So I actually do like little security checkpoints at every entrance of this building so that everyone has to go through a security room that will have a security desk in it so we can like permanently have someone actually in the building and stopping burglars get in. Um, so I did a lot of planning with that as well. So, you know, I feel like I did a pretty good job on this one. Um, oh, I really like, I really like, this is what I was talking about. I really like that sort of combination. I've got like the sort of wooden looking pillars. Then we've got the sort of sandstone-ish bricks there. Then I also combine it with like some gray, uh, like sort of paneling on this building. I don't know, I think it's a cool building. I actually really like it. <laughs> <laughs> There's some quirks of it that sort of crop up because of the weird shape, but um, overall it actually works pretty well. So downstairs ends up being, and we'll, don't worry, we'll do a full building tour at the end because like I said, a lot of this is actually cut out and glossed over. 
but the ground floor is obviously the main lobby and I did do some reception desks because we did not have a reception at the last building. And basically the reception is where other companies can come in, talk to the receptionist and propose a deal. Like, hey, if you print 2 million copies of this thing for us by, uh, let's say October, we'll give you this money. Or they can be like, hey, can you host our thing on your servers? That kind of stuff uh, will come through the reception. So they'll go in the main lobby They'll propose that stuff, so that's down there. There's also just like a little waiting area, uh, some public bathrooms downstairs. And I also have most of the large meeting rooms for the company on the ground floor as well, because I don't know, I always find it a little bit strange if I were to have like these big development offices on the ground floor. I don't know, I just feel like I want it to be a little bit more private for the developers, like being up a bit higher so people can't just like sort of peer in and see what they're up to. So the ground floor is like there's some meeting rooms, although I guess having said about private, if you're having like private meetings and uh, I did do big glass windows to them, I don't know, it looks cool, it's fine, whatever. Maybe it doesn't make the most sense. So this is one of my stairwells or my, like my fire, my fire escape. Um, and this runs through the entire building. We have one at this end of the building, one at the other end of the building, uh, so that, you know, you can walk up and down the stairs everywhere. And actually, a lot of the employees use those. I did do plenty of elevators as well. Um, we have, and I actually redesigned this middle hallway soon because I didn't really like how these were cutting in like so far. So I end up doing two of the largest lifts at both ends of the buildings. And each of those lifts can hold 40 people. So we could have at any one time, I guess what, 160 people moving in lifts in this building. And I don't think we have that many employees work. Oh, actually maybe. How many teams do we have? We're like nine teams. Oh yeah, we probably have a lot of, eh, we probably have a lot of people working at one time. But a lot of them actually tend to use the stairs because they only have to go one, maybe two floors. I think if they're going like three stories or further, they tend to use the elevator. Um, otherwise they'll just use the stairs. So that's that. The other exciting thing about this building is we can do a proper kitchen canteen setup, which I we do end up doing, I think on maybe the second floor or the third floor. I can't remember where it is, but it's there somewhere. Um, and I think it's really cool. It's really cool. And actually I, I've tested this building out a little bit. I have, um, like I, I saved before and then I played for a few days just to make sure everything was there and working. And then I've, I've sort of not saved that progress. So we haven't missed any progress. But I did test it and oh man, watching the canteen work is actually so cool because so many of the employees go in there. Because uh, in this building, in, in the last one, I actually did a lot of mini fridges and like um, the vending machines in each of the individual development offices. Now I have done still some vending machines and some mini fridges, but I have not done enough for every employee. So there's a lot more employees going to use the canteen now than there was before. Um, which is really cool. So you get to see a lot of people going there. Now this, I had a lot of fun with. Also, I was kind of struggling, but as you can see, what I'm trying to do is curve the walls of the lobby because I wanted to have this central part in the lobby where it was just like this sort of, I guess, rounded area with the reception desks, waiting area. I, did, I don't know, I thought it looked really, really cool. I had a lot of fun with it. I also built this uh, lounge. Um, it's that the room, the brightest room that becomes a lounge later on, which no one really uses, which is kind of a shame. So I think I might, because I have specified it as a lounge, but I think I'll just change it to any room because the thing is employees like uh, the IT and maintenance will not use that room. They just sort of sit in hallways and stuff. Uh, if it's designated as a lounge, I might actually just like let anyone go there. I'm also using a lot of rugs in this build too, just to make it a little bit more interesting. Uh, as you can see, I did also do plenty of bathrooms. Don't worry, they are there. And all the bathrooms have, which I don't think they need it, but they got fire alarms and sprinklers and heating and cooling. So you're gonna have a beautiful time, a beautiful time in there. Um, most of the floors have plenty of bathrooms, so there isn't any trouble uh, accessing them. Uh, and then we have, uh, I think, oh yeah, this level here is where the kitchen and canteen goes. So this weird little hallway, I was actually gonna do it as a bathroom, but then that actually worked out better as a kitchen because the kitchen doesn't actually need to be that big and there's not a huge amount of decorative items that can go uh, in kitchens. So I didn't wanna make it too big, otherwise it was gonna look a little weird. Now this room, uh, this is the canteen here, which I really like. So I did a bunch of tables around the sides because as you can see, we got a bunch of those uh, pillars that are cutting into the room, which is what I was talking about. I use those to do different wall patterns on the exterior to make it a little bit more visually interesting than it would be otherwise. 
And then I got a bunch of circular tables here and uh, just did some chairs. So there's plenty of seating in there. I think there was like 72 seats in the end with all of these additional ones put in here. So I think that was more than enough. Although a, a lot of them do fill up once everyone rushes in for uh, lunch or dinner. Um, I did also, in this time lapse, I've already rehired all of our like staff, like the cleaners and maintenance and IT. And I hired a lot more than we used to have because we were having, as you guys pointed out, I had like glitchy lights before. Um, and that was actually, I think just broken lights. Although I remember the game used to tell you if a light was broken, like it had a little warning symbol. Though I guess it didn't seem to have that anymore. So that's why I didn't know what was going on. But yeah, we got more maintenance and IT now. I also have utilized, and I'll go through, I guess this once we, do the tour of the building. I did group all the rooms by the levels. So like the ground floor is one group. And basically what that means is I can assign cleaners and maintenance to that specific level. Because if you don't do that, you can end up with them all bunching up and going to one place and not, not everywhere gets fully cleaned. Um, at least that's something I found in the previous series when we didn't do the room groups was that no, not everything was getting serviced properly, especially when we ended up having multiple canteens and kitchens. That was a big problem with the cooks is they wouldn't go to the correct kitchen. So um, the room group system actually works really well for making sure you have an even spread of cleaners, IT cooks and all that kind of stuff. So I grouped each floor uh, together and uh, we end up with a lot of weird rooms, by the way. <laughs> and I say weird rooms, like weird, um, like these little, this little space here. This is this level's bathroom. Um, but it all works out really well. And also now for every single uh, team that we have, you know, like the office development team, the game devs, the antivirus team, every single team leader also has their own office, either within the main studio. So they'll have like an office that overlooks the room. Or I think some of them are a little bit more separated. Um, but every team leader has their own individual office, which is pretty cool in my opinion. So this here is, which office is this? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know which one this is. Oh, this might be one of the main, I think this is one of the first ones. So this is gonna be for the operating system teams. So the two operating system teams that we have now are the uh, console and the phone operating system team. These two offices are pretty much the same. I just copied and pasted them. Uh, which, like I said, I said I did all, try to do all offices differently. These two are not. I might I might change the colors of them because they obviously they look very same samey with uh, all the same colors and everything. But in here, I made sure to do like lots of decoration. They have three by three office cubicles, which is pretty incredible. Now I didn't go over the top and increase team sizes massively. Because as you may notice, like when we're developing software, the game usually recommends something around like 14 or 15 people for a project. So, and if you go over that, which you can do, you could have a hundred people working on something or like a crazy number. Um, it can actually just slow it down or, well, I mean, it will probably be a bit faster, but you get really diminishing returns and also the quality of the product can be not as good. So I didn't, like some of the teams are, I think pushing like 30, 30 plus people now in the offices. But that's why I was able to give them such big uh, cubicles here because we didn't really need to hire many more people um, and I didn't want to. So most of the teams are a similar size, if not a little bit bigger. None of them are smaller than they used to be though. So uh, that is something that I kept in mind. And uh, I actually really like the uh, new floor vents which we didn't, they didn't used to exist. Like there's, there's like heating and cooling vents that go around the floors now, which is really nice. Cause they used to just be like the little fan you put in the wall and radiators that you had to put around rooms. So I quite like that. Um, so this here is a, I didn't think, I don't think we showed this, but it's like a little um, rooftop uh, garden kind of thing. Or it says grass on a pathway. I thought it was really cool. Um, and here I was actually gonna expand the building above with columns and I did start doing it and I did spend a lot of time on it. Uh, it didn't end up looking that good, so I actually didn't do it in the end. I don't know how much of that's in this recording, but this is why I didn't record a lot of this stuff, because there's just so much. Like, there's so much, like, trying stuff and undoing it. Even this, I'm just trying to place the columns, and I was <laughs> struggling to do it. Uh, so they all go here, and it ends up being not the best looking. Like, you can see, it basically just squares off the building. Like here, and it didn't look that good, so I was like, oh, um, yeah, then no, Because no. I want, basically, I wanted to enable the ability to keep building upward uh, 
but it looked stupid, so I, I just got rid of it. So we've jumped forward a lot in time here because there was so many furnishing of different offices. Again, we'll do a, a tour at the end of all of this. Up here is actually a brand new office for a new team that we're gonna be hiring, and this is gonna be the legal team. We're gonna have a bunch of lawyers, and they are gonna fight all my battles for me. No, they're actually gonna be, well, I mean, maybe they'll fight my battles for me if we get sued. But they're gonna be for the patenting of our research that all our R&D teams are doing so that we can patent like system like tech and, and all that kind of stuff and make money off it or at least prevent other companies from using it if they don't pay us. And that's what I call anti-competitive behavior. And that's what we love. Yeah, so this is just a big new office for a new team. Uh, and I think we will probably build more uh, because I want, I this building is just for all of our existing teams not to mention expanding and I do want to expand because we do I do want to have a computer operating system which we don't have a team for and I also probably want to develop more games we only have the one game development team right now so it'd be nice to get more of those so we will probably expand maybe go upward in this building or I, I, we can't really go outward because we're already up so high but we might keep building up and uh, adding that way but yeah, that's um, that that that's kind of most of the building, or at least furnishing done. I mean, there's still more stuff to do. We have the whole warehouse to do. Don't forget, we had we got to rebuild the production line for our uh, console and our phone, and we have to put up all our printers and build a warehouse and get all those logistics done. We also need the multi-story car park um, to to go here, so everyone can actually get to the office. If we didn't have that. They'd all try to use the bus and it would take them hours and hours to get here because it's only like one bus. Uh, so yeah. So this, um, I guess currently the, the the lawyers have like the best office in the building. Well, I guess if by best, uh, maybe the one that's highest up. I mean, it's pretty nice. I don't know if it is the best office in terms of actual stuff in it. I have not um, decorated a lot of the offices that much in terms of, well, I have, but stuff on the desks, like I haven't done the little plants and also I haven't done the little booster items, like, like the calculators and the notepads in a lot of the rooms. Cause when I was initially building them, I didn't actually know uh, who was gonna be in what office. So I'll have to go back and add in some uh, little bonus items. So here is the multi-story that's gonna go out the back. Um, I didn't put it all the way up to the roads because I thought it was nice to have a little bit of grass around it. So this is basically just a three level car park that not nearly, it's not nearly full. Uh, I could probably remove the top level because uh, you'll see once we get in the game that everyone sort of just squishes on one side of it, which is funny. But over here, I did actually add an elevator uh, tower because I figured that was probably useful. Otherwise, I'd all have to walk down the ramps and that takes forever. Because the weird thing in this game is the way they park, they park physically closest to the building. So they won't all park on the ground floor, which would be quicker. They will park on the third level on the spot that's physically closest. So I was like, oh, that's so annoying. So I, I put it in this elevator tower with four large elevators so that everyone can get up and down really, really easily. Now over here, this is the uh, warehouse, which is just off to the side of where the other multi-story is. Uh, it might be a bit hard to tell in context right now, but we'll jump into the game in just a second and be able to see it. So this as well, I wanted the building to be interesting. That's why it's got a few different shapes here. Uh, I didn't want it to be the same, just basic rectangle. I mean, it's pretty basic. It's just a few big rectangles, but I think it's a little bit more visually interesting this way than just having uh, a really standard shape. So here, I, I kind of, I don't know how long we'll be able to do this for, but I wanted to have only two output windows here for all of our manufacturing. So one of those uh, bay windows or delivery windows is gonna be for all the printed stuff. And then the other one is gonna be for all the manufactured stuff. And I wanna try and get everything on those conveyor belts going to the, those two windows. Obviously that may not work. It's probably gonna get really messy really quickly, but we're gonna try it, but we have plenty more space to do extra stuff uh, upstairs. Like I, I have barely filled this building. There's so much room. Um, and don't worry, there's some servers there. We haven't seen servers in the other building, but they do exist. And I'll give you the grand tour, I guess right now, because this is pretty much done. Uh, I didn't record building all the production lines again, because that, that took ages and uh, there was a lot. So let's jump into the game and have a, a, a nice big tour of the building. All right, so this is the building. Let's just fast forward a little bit so it's daytime. Uh, and as you can see, everyone parks, like I was saying, on the side. Although, yeah, like I said, this car park is way too big for our needs. I mean, if everyone parked on the ground, it would probably take up most of the space, but most of them just park up top. So this is the building. Let's get a little bit brighter in the day. 
Uh, I think it looks really, really cool. It's just a shame that literally no one uses this front entrance. Everyone goes that way. Even like visitors coming to the reception. Um, and this is what I was talking about. I'm trying to get the different like wall patterns on the outside. I think it. I think it turned out really, really cool. Like I, this is definitely my most interesting software ink build, I believe. Uh, and then over here was a warehouse. In case you didn't get too good of a look at it, just there. Uh, let's have a look at this first, because this is probably the least interesting of the building. I mean, it's still pretty cool. So here, uh, like it's, hey, where's my security guard? Oh, you know what? It's because it, it's literally the first day of us, you know, running this whole thing. So they'll probably come in tomorrow. I have hired everyone if we look in here. The whole bunch of people hired, ready to come in. Uh, anyway, so the, yeah, every building has like a security room like this with cameras and the desk. So the guards will always be there. And uh, here, this is actually our backup server. So this is like like before, we have the live server, the live backup. So if this one goes down, this one will take over. And then we also have the source control, which we'll see later. This is the backup server. In here, this is where we are making the phone, I believe. Wait, let's see, final assembly uh, of the phone. Yeah, so the phones come out here. There is one of them going through there. And then they will jump onto one of these. And then both of these lines here will go to this one window on the exit. Uh, and then back over this way, this is where we can print software. Now I have upped our capacity. We can now print 2 million copies a day, I think. Let's have a look. We, yeah, we can. We have a printing capacity of 2.1 million per day. I figured I wanted to do that in case we wanted to accept some deals. Like sometimes they ask, hey, print a million by the end of the month. Like we can do that now. We have the capacity of printing that much. Also we have the capacity of expanding it. We, like I said, we have so much extra space in here. Up here, this is uh, the console. This is where we produce all our consoles. And then they will jump down here, jump on the conveyor belt, and they actually join up with the phone one as well. So we should have um, yeah, Game Station 2's in there, J phones over here. So, you know, they're all sort of coming to this area. So that is the warehouse. And over here, all these parking spots, a, uh, oh, they're actually, oh no, yeah, they are, de they're designated for delivery. So all of our couriers will park right here, right by the window, grab the boxes. So over here, oh, actually, you know what? I do need to build, which is kind of annoying. I have to build fire escapes on all these because technically they, don't have stairs to get out of this building, which is silly, but anyway. Right, so down into the main building. We haven't really seen all of this yet because it was all uh, cut out <laughs> because of so much. So this is the main reception area, which I think looks so cool. I love this. Hey, there's no one in here, which is really not. You know, what? I'm going to fast forward till tomorrow when all the staff come in and the security. Oh, wait, hang on. Uh, Music Studio actually needs to be released and actually needs to be pr oh, it's not printed yet. Uh, so before I skip forward, I got to release Music Studio, otherwise people will get mad. Do you want to release? Uh, I do want to do a campaign, yes. 200, no, 100,000, not 250. 100,000, yep. And I will order copies because I haven't printed any yet. That's all right, we'll just order some. Cool, so that's released. Uh, and then June 2004 is our next thing, right? Oh, research of system is done, sweet. Yeah, so that's, uh, okay, good. I just wanted to, okay, now I'm gonna fast forward till tomorrow when everyone's sort of here. Oh yeah, look here, they come down the stairs. <laughs> oh my gosh, the traffic jam getting out of here. You, you know guys, there are other ways you can go out, but they all just go this way. And look how dirty the elevator <laughs> is. This is why we need cleaner, there they are. Oh, Tiny Tim 2 doesn't meet demand. Are we printing this? We are, we're printing 250,000. Wait, how many did we sell? 120,000. Oh, it might've been because we moved office. Maybe it hadn't printed all of them yet. Yeah, now, now it's, oh, this is just printing infinitely. Hang on, whoops. Let's uh, do a maximum on that. <laughs> okay, we don't need more than 400,000 copies. Cool, all right, so that, that's back in the stock. That's all good. Yeah, yeah, they all come. Uh, there's two doors guys, you can use this one as well. I, I know you don't really want to, oh my gosh. Yeah, so this is what I was talking about, the little security rooms. There's one person here, one person here. I've only assigned them to this room, but they like to stand at the doors as well, but that's fine. As long as there's a security person around here, there's obviously cameras as well. And then over this side of the building, there's also a desk, uh, but this guy wants to stand up for some reason. So, you know, there's all that. Uh, we got the lobby, like I said, with our receptionist here, these two desks, and this is just like a little decorative middle bit. Behind them is actually a big meeting room, which I'm gonna jump into build mode because it's easier to see. A uh, nice big meeting room, uh, which I really liked with those windows there. I thought that looked really cool. And then this is the lounge, which I, like I said, I'm gonna specify this for anyone because no one really uses it. So <laughs> I'll, just, I'll just let anyone use it. Like uh, guests can come in and use this as well. I don't mind, that's fine. So that's there. And then we have a few more meeting rooms. There's another one over here, another smaller one here. 
And I actually also really like this hallway. I don't know why, I just kind of like it. It sort of curves around the back. And then we have some bathrooms down here that anyone can use. And this is our boiler room to, to, to heat up the building. So that's right there. And then we have the fire escape stairs here with the elevators next to it and another set of fire escape stairs over here. Let's go back into regular mode and we go up to our first floor. Here we have the marketing office. Like I said, I try to make all the offices a little bit different. So this one's a bit more open, like it's not fully cubicle. It's kind of almost like uh, an open office kind of design. I did put these in the middle because I don't want it to be too loud because I do get upset by that. And then this is the team leader's office in here. Uh, they have their own little place and they've got like a little couple chairs here so people can come in for meetings. I mean, they don't, but it looks cool. Um, yeah, so that's that there. Then we have the bathrooms in the middle. There's 10 like toilets here in the middle that they can all use. And the main hallway where like staff can just sit. Like this will probably be IT and maintenance. That's maintenance guy. And this is my IT guy. And then over here, we got the antivirus office, which this one is way bigger. It's not as, like I haven't put as many things on the tables because I have still got to do that. We'll probably do that over time. And this is, this is my office. Uh, this is me. I work on the antivirus team. I'm sitting in here. Pretty cool little office right there. I'm going to turn off all the uh, overhead lighting just because it kind of gets a bit busy, there's so much of it. And then we've also got, this is the office development team in here, little corner office for the leader. That all sits there. And finally on this floor, we've got the game development studio over here. I love the like shininess of this floor too. This one again is a little bit more open, uh, which I quite, I quite like the, the aesthetic of that. And then the leader sits in there. Uh, moving up to the next level, we have the, this is the offices you saw in the time lapse, the console and the phone team. These two are pretty much the same. We might change the colors just to make it a bit different. But these guys have pretty epic cubicles. Like they each have a three by three cubicle with a whole bunch of stuff in it. Like this is a pretty, a pretty awesome office. Uh, but you may notice there's no team leaders in this, uh, this room. Uh, that was actually before I decided to separate them out. So the team leader for the console and the operating system are actually over here in these two little offices that overlook the uh, little balcony on the way to the canteen. So here is our canteen uh, that you saw, which at the height of lunch, it's pretty epic. So these chefs are in here. Yeah, look at this. How cool is that? I don't know, I love it. It's like so busy. They're all sitting around these little tables. Some of the people go to the sides, a couple of coffee machines at the back there. I love it. And then it's like some people come down the stairs, some jump in the elevator. I don't know, it just feels so alive. It's so cool. I really, really love this. Then moving up to the next level. Oh, oh yeah, let me turn off the labels here. So this, this gets a little hectic. So oh, actually, hang on, before we look at that, we got the 3D editor team over here in this corner office. Quite nice, pretty standard, but they each have like, a different desks than the other offices. This one is our support team. This is very open. I probably want to expand our support team a little bit more, maybe make it a bit bigger, but for now they're in this office here. Over here, this is our primary server. So this is actually in the overhang at the front of the building because I could have put it up, turned it into an office, but uh, I didn't want any windows in it. And I thought it would be really kind of upsetting to be in an office with absolutely no windows. So I just turned it into a server room. Um, so this is our live server right here. And our little SCM server is here. If I jump into build mode, it's actually easy to see. The SCM actually has a little custom color that I put onto it. So that's in there. I actually have this little security room here too. It doesn't serve any purpose, but I thought it was kind of cool. It's got a bunch of cameras on it just to see who's going in there. And then back over this way, this is the audio team. So this is the audio tool team. And I thought this was a fun idea to give everyone on this off, uh, on this team their own little office. Like, I, because the idea was like, if they're making some audio software, they would need to be able to play music and sounds and be able to hear it with proper studio monitors. Obviously that's not a thing in this game, but that was the kind of idea behind it. So everyone has their own private little uh, studio in here within the audio team, which I thought was really cool. Obviously the main office just here. Oh, and then this is the team leader for the 3D team sitting here. This That office is actually pretty sweet. I mean, the view's not as nice as of a car park, but pretty, pretty nice sized office there. Moving up again, oh boy, it keeps on going. These two offices here that are looking similar and very open are actually the research and development teams working on, you know, uh, well, let's have a look. 2D and network, and we've got the 3D and audio team. Over here's our 2D editor team, and the team leader sits in here, very nice office. I love these little curved walls, I'm having fun with those. So they sit in there. Moving up one final time, as I said, this is the new office for the legal department, and this is another R&D team here. Over here is actually the air conditioning building, or suite, which is actually not joined to this section. We could join it later, but I didn't really plan to 
because it doesn't really need to be. And that is the building. That is the entire building, all the teams in there, all their offices. I think it's so cool. I mean, every floor has bathrooms, which I, I didn't point out all of them. But so the ground floor is here, the middle floor is here. These ones are over this side. We've got a few up here. The top floor does not, because I didn't, oh no, this one does. Sorry, this is not the top floor. So bathrooms here, the top floor does not, because this one is actually significantly smaller than the other floors. Um, and I didn't think they really needed it, because this team will be a team size of 28, including the leader. This is 20, so it's pretty big, but they can come down and use these ones over here, or they can go down and use these ones. Kind of annoying. I mean, maybe I'll add them in, but we'd have to expand the building somewhere. Maybe I do join it over this way. Uh, we just didn't have any room for it at the moment. But that is the new office and the new studio and the new warehouse over here, which I think is really, really cool. It gives a lot of room for doing stuff. Also, no one really uses these meeting rooms because I don't think, I think most of my leaders don't have the meeting ability, but I would love to see meetings taking place down here. So yeah, we will be back next time. I'm, so, I'm afraid to say this is the end of this episode. I know we haven't really done any you know development but i mean we did the huge thing of uh building i mean this did like i said this took me days literal days of building and, and planning and designing this thing but i'm so happy with it i hope you guys like it as well but thanks so much for watching make sure to leave your comments and suggestions for this building down below if you have any ideas like i said i do still need to like detail this room a bit more but i kind of wanted to get it all up and running so i could get the video out in time uh, these two are, are, I'm pretty happy with, but yeah, a few of the offices need a few more details, but uh, overall pretty good. And uh, we will be, yeah, I want to expand, probably add some more teams, maybe next episode. But thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. But make sure to leave your comments, suggestions, and feedback down below. And have an awesome day.